Take a look at your fingernails. Are they a bit ridged? There are a bunch of reasons why that might happen, and it has nothing to do with your manicure skills. To start with, know that your fingernails might be a good indicator of any health problems. But those vertical ridges are normal, especially when you get older. It's your skin's way of showing it needs to slow down. New skin cells don't get produced as rapidly as they used to, so you get this texture on your fingernails. However, if this is just one of many other weird symptoms, it might be more than just a sign of aging. Hmm. For instance, it may be a sign of a chemical imbalance, which can give you vertical ridges, but also make your nails look spoon-shaped. Don't put stuff in your ear. You know that. Even with Q-tips, you should always be gentle when using it. Otherwise, you could end up causing more harm. What's even more interesting is that sticking things in your ear can trigger a weird coughing mechanism, also known as the Arnold's ear cough reflex. Turns out that the ear has a say in coughing because of the vagus nerve, this long nerve road from the brain to the belly. It taps the ear, handles the voice box, and takes a detour to the stomach. This nerve runs all sorts of daily activities without us being able to control it, from speaking to eating and even bathroom breaks. Now, the part that connects it with the ear is Arnold's nerve. This one deals with touch sensations. Stick something in your ear and it can get triggered. And it's precisely that tickle sensation that can make you cough. Think of it as a brain blip, tricking your body into believing it's got something in the throat. You end up coughing as a way to kick out the imaginary intruder. You might be missing a muscle in your arm too. But it's okay. You are most likely born that way, and you're also one of many. It's called the palmaris longus tendon, and about 14% of the population doesn't have it. Here's how you can test it out. Gently flex your wrist and touch your pinky with your thumb. If you can see a little tendon protruding on the inside of your wrist, you've got it. If you don't, that's fine. For the most part, this muscle doesn't increase the performance of our arm. Here's another little experiment you can safely try at home. Check which one of your nostrils is your favorite, even though you probably didn't even know you had one. Stand in front of a mirror, breathe out through your nose, and watch how the fog forms. Sure, there will be two marks on the mirror, but for most people, one's gonna be bigger. That's because we usually breathe more from one nostril at a time. Some doctors say that about 75% of our breath comes from one single nostril. It also switches sides during the day, in a process called the nasal cycle. So why not both nostrils at once? Well, it's generally believed to be all about moisture, preventing one side from getting too dry. The only time you might be able to notice the difference is when you're trying to fall asleep. Lie on your right side, and you'll see that gravity makes one part of your nose work harder. Speaking of sleep, whenever you're trying to get some rest at a new place, only a part of your brain will actually get some quality sleep. That's because our brains are wired to remain a bit more alert when we're in an unfamiliar place. This discovery explains why we often wake up feeling groggy after a night in a new apartment. This is a feature we share with birds and sea creatures who can half sleep, keeping an eye out. Back in the day, sleep researchers noticed this and named it the first night effect. Whenever someone participated in a sleep study, they noticed the quality of their rest was so bad they had to trash the data. But after the first night, it seemed to level up. We do this because back in ancient times, the chances of getting attacked by predators during the night were way higher. So, it made sense hmm. to keep that part of the brain on guard for any dangers. Unfortunately, there's no switch to flip this off. So, after a night in a new place, just know you'll need way more coffee. And maybe hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our newest videos for a nice pick-me-up in those snoozy days. It's possible that each time you're getting ready for a workout, your heart is already acting up, even though you aren't technically moving your muscles yet. That's because of an effect called anticipatory rise. In simple terms, it's like your brain is sending directions to your heart, telling it to get ready. These directions come in the form of chemicals, like noradrenaline and adrenaline. 
It's helpful because that kick in heart rate means more blood pumping out every minute, which is good for your muscles. The increased blood flow delivers oxygen and prepares your muscles to put in the required effort. The better shape your heart's in, the smoother this whole process goes. All of us have heard stories about regular people being able to lift heavy objects in stressful situations. You know, like a mom being able to lift a car to save her kid. Some are calling it hysterical strength. And it can't really be tested out in a lab because you can't just fake a sense of imminent danger. It's more about real, spontaneous moments that somehow trigger this hidden superpower. Well, even though it sounds like people are lifting a ton of weight, they're not that strong. Take the classic car lift scenario. You'd think they're lifting the whole car, but it's more like lifting a part of it. Most wheels are still on the ground. Plus, cars aren't evenly heavy everywhere. The engine's the densest part, not the area that's often being lifted. As for the hysterical strength, it's more about realizing we're stronger than we think. Our muscles usually use the least effort needed for everyday tasks. But when we need to go all out, we can recruit more muscle power. You see, our bodies are very efficient. Why use all our muscles when lifting a coffee cup? Even when we feel exhausted, chances are we're not. Researchers say we might only use 60 to 80% of our muscle strength, and that's reserved for top athletes. Apart from efficiency, our brains also don't go full power on our muscles because of a built-in safety mechanism. If we used all our strength, we could easily hurt ourselves. The simple game of peekaboo isn't just a fun pastime for babies. They love it so much because it can help with their development. You see, it's not just about covering and uncovering faces. It helps them better master the skill of visual tracking. It's also useful for understanding the concept of object permanence. Just because they can't see something, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gone forever. This knowledge that objects exist even if they're out of sight will increase their problem-solving skills when they get older. Playing peekaboo is also a good way to exercise various positive emotions. They go from surprise to anticipation to excitement and happiness. Some say they can do just fine with just four hours of sleep every night. But scientists say most of us adults need a good six to eight hours. And the reality is that anything less than this average can lead to serious sleep deprivation. That is, of course, if you're not one of those super sleepers. These people are magical beings who thrive on less than six hours of sleep each night. They function properly on that little, but they also naturally wake up after just four or five hours. Only one to three percent of the population can claim that title. Also, no, it's genetic. You can't train yourself to be one. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.